Four years ago when I stood on this stage, I said that uh, I would cut taxes for middle class families. Uh, and that's exactly what I did. Just a weeks away from now looms the so-called fiscal cliff, a combination of automatic spending cuts and tax increases mandated by law. Revenue hungry, absolutely. They're continually looking for new sources of revenue. New sources of revenue that will not cause a popular outcry, like increasing taxes does. The Congressional Budget Office has said that the long-term budget forecast is just horrible and there has to be changes. There has to be more revenue coming in, there has to be less spending. And just the proposals that you see don't seem to be moving in that direction. What matters is where the increased revenue comes from and what type of reform comes with it. Does the increased revenue come from government taking a larger share of what the American people earn through higher tax rates? If you're so short on revenue that uh, if you start raising tax rates, you, you may find that you may not get as much revenue as you would expect it because people stop working or they stop, start evading taxes or they leave the country. If you increase taxes in New York, ultimately what's going to happen? People are going to move to another state, right? California or whatever, which we're seeing some of that, right? Well, what if you increase taxes in the U.S. as a whole? Ultimately, as bad as that sounds that you're talking about, what does that say about, well, maybe people get up and move to other countries? If it, for example, um, wants to spend on something, if it cannot raise taxes to fund this uh, spending project, um, then it, it will print money or it will borrow money. It will borrow money from abroad and put us into, in, into debt. If you're getting a stimulus check, if you're getting a, a corporate bailout payment, it's coming from somewhere or it's going to come from somewhere in the future. Wealth can't be created out of thin air um, and it can't be printed on little green pieces of paper either. So there has to be some fundamental production or efficiency that's being promoted to actually generate wealth. If we connect I-49 to Arkansas and then connect it all the way up, I can't say that that's bad, you know, because we'll have more business coming, you know, more people coming through Shreveport, which arguably I think is, is a good thing. So maybe that isn't bad. But if government takes tax dollars and puts somebody to work on the infrastructure, well, really, you're not necessarily adding jobs because you're taking that resource away from somewhere else it could be used. The effect that it has on the government budget where we're running a you know, over a trillion dollar deficit now, deficit, not even the debt. Um, the yearly deficit is 1.4 something trillion dollars. And this is money that has to get paid back. Um, so it it's, helps out people now, but you know, in the future, who's gonna, who's gonna make these tax payments? It's a lot of money, you know, it's trillions of dollars. And you say, okay, well, where, where do we cut in other areas? You know, do we increase taxes? You can't increase taxes that much, right? Because you're talking about the incentive to work. So in order to cover a $200 trillion fiscal gap, we would have to immediately and permanently double all federal income taxes, all payroll tax, federal payroll taxes, the FICA tax. We'd have to double uh, the corporate income tax, the estate and gift tax. So all the taxes the federal government collects from now till really the end of time, we would have to double that entire path of tax taxes and clearly that would, may require more than doubling tax rates because uh, people may respond by not, as I said, working or evading. And it may be that collecting twice the amount of taxes that we're, we'd otherwise be collecting is just not feasible. We will have to raise taxes in the future. In order to raise taxes in the future, tax codes are going to have to be more complicated. In order for tax codes to be more complicated, tax enforcement is going to have to be more credible and probably more severe. I, in, real, in real terms, I, our criminal justice system cannot afford that in its current manifestation. We're either going to grow it exponentially more than what's already been grown, which is significant, or it's going to be a point of uh, instability in the, in the system as a whole. 
there comes a point where the tax rates get so high that people actually, you know, just start working in the underground economy. Uh, they don't pay the taxes and the government just can't do it. It's infeasible. So what we really need to do is cut spending because we can't cover this problem with tax hikes. The tax hikes that are required are just too big. And we have to focus uh, particularly on the health expenditures, which uh, have been growing more or less exponentially for decades now. So I'm talking here about Medicare and Medicaid uh, expenditures. There are those that are truly in need, and but for government, perhaps they don't receive those goods and services that they knew, do need. But that's a, that's a health care safety net that can exist, but all of that needs to occur um, in, an, in a uh, balancing revenues with expenditures. No tax hike is going to be able to deal with exponential growth in spending. It just far outstrips the growth of the economy. So we have to get this uh, under control. And unfortunately, the politicians haven't really done that. The people I talk to across Kentucky, they don't want any more political fights. They'd like to see us get somewhere. They want the two parties to work together to find a solution to our fiscal problems. Democrats in the House believe that the best way to fix the debt is to create jobs. Uh, so we want to hear some views of the Fix the Debt uh, Coalition about job creation, injecting demand into the economy to create jobs. These are people who paid in over a lifetime into Social Security and Medicare and fully expect the protection which they've invested in to be there. And it has to be there. All those liabilities are based on current expenditures and current benefit levels. So obviously, uh, balancing the federal budget is scaling back on those benefits, drawing new lines. But in the context of not spending more money than what you take in, you, by balancing, by balancing the federal budget, you, you zero out those uh, liabilities going forward. Our whole living standard is going to a collapse. Uh, the Americans are going to be spending the vast majority of their income on food and energy. And unfortunately, the rest of it will be taxes and insurance and interest. Uh, you know, the, our whole society is going to unravel. The whole way of life that Americans have experienced for the last couple of generations is going to disappear. <laughs>